This video is going to be the second video in a series about analysis of variance. This video is going to specifically tell us something about hypothesis tests for the method ANOVA. Now remember, despite its name, ANOVA, that is analysis of variance, is actually tell us, telling us something about means across the levels of a categorical variable, specifically when there is more than two levels. Because analysis of variance is telling us something about the means, what we're implicitly doing anytime we perform a hypothesis test in analysis of variance is comparing the means of multiple groups. So imagine you had, let's say, five groups. That is a categorical variable with five levels. You would ask, is mu1 equal to mu2? And is mu2 equal to mu3? But because they're all equal signs, you're also asking, is the mean of group one equal to the mean of group three? And moreover, you're just going to keep stringing on equal signs. Is the mean of group one equal to the mean of group four, which is simultaneously equal to the mean of group five? This is really a statement about multiple different comparisons, like one to two, one to three, one to four, and one to five. But also wrapped up in this comparison is 2 to 3, 2 to 4, and 2 to 5. We're comparing the means in all ways possible here under this null hypothesis, which is standard for analysis of variance. Because the alternative hypothesis is to be the opposite of the null hypothesis, it's actually really difficult to write out the opposite of that null hypothesis symbolically. So instead, what I encourage you to do is just think of this as at least one mean is different from the rest. So that's telling you that it could be the case that that equal sign is broken. If the alternative seems like the more likely scenario, it could be the case that these two equal signs are broken. It could be the case, if the alternative hypothesis seems more likely, that these three equal signs are broken. Even if the first one holds, we would still conclude in favor of the alternative. So the analysis of variance hypothesis test looks like this. It's standard practice to set a level of significance right up front when you specify your hypotheses. A common choice is 0.05. And I'm going to show you in R how you can evaluate this hypothesis test. It turns out to be not super easy if you're going to do the math yourself. But lucky for us, we have this great example going. Uh, continuing it from the last video on analysis of variance. And I'm going to give you code below this example to show you how to uh, evaluate the hypothesis we just wrote out. So here I will write it out again or separately so that we can see what it might look like in this case. In the scenario I'm presenting to you here, where I'm comparing brain to body weight ratios across the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've already done that, shouldn't I know this is eight levels of the categorical variable family, I essentially have all of the possible means, mu, subscripted by the first letter of each level equal to each other. And in the alternative hypothesis, we essentially have at least one mean is different from the rest. And we'll settle our level of significance to be 0.05. The way we evaluate this hypothesis in R, it's standard for me to call this first object fit. And then we're going to use the function named lm, which I will explain in a 
entirely another week of this course. For now, you just have to go about using it. And then the syntax inside the function ln looks very similar to the syntax inside the function t.test. You start with your numerical variable of interest. So in our case, that is br2bd, the variable we created using the library dplyr. And then you put a tilde. This character here is found by holding shift and pressing the button to the left of one. Okay, so you start with your numerical variable, and then you put in a tilde, and then you put the categorical variable of interest. That goes on the x, for explanatory variable, x-axis. So essentially, all your, your explanatory variable goes to the right of tilde, and your numeric variable goes to the left of the tilde. The last piece you need in here is to put the data frame from which those variables come. Okay, so we'll run that. Theoretically, we got no issues. And then you type out ANOVA, and you call that on the object you just named, FIT. Now, you could technically choose any name you want instead of FIT, but I use FIT, um, and I will throughout much of the class. So you can see, by calling ANOVA, you got a standard analysis of variance table. In the analysis of variance table, there will be one row for each explanatory variable. We, at this point, only have one explanatory variable, family. So here is that one row. And there will be one row for the residuals, which is not something we need to concern ourselves with greatly right now. The degrees of freedom are similar to degrees of freedom from a t-test. They help ensure that you have gotten the code in R correct. Your degrees of freedom should be one fewer than the number of levels you have. So look over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because your degrees of freedom on the explanatory variable family are one fewer than the number of levels, you at least have some evidence that you have programmed this code correctly. If your degrees of freedom are ever not one number fewer than the number of levels you have, you probably did something wrong. Okay, all the way at the end, this here is your p-value. Notice, I'm just going to copy it, p-value is less than alpha. What, what just happened there? Well, I don't know what's going on there at all. Oh, that was so weird. <laughs> I, that was a copy and paste issue. I'm just going to let you guys deal with that because I don't know what was going on. So here is our p-value, copy and pasted from the analysis of variance table. Your p-value is less than your level of significance. When the p-value is low, reject HO. In this case, we're rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So we have evidence based on our data that at least one mean is different from the rest. At least one of these means is not equal to another. Yeah, so maybe Ursidae or Hyenidae or Eluridae or maybe all three of them are the different ones. To be honest, the analysis of variance hypothesis test does not tell us which mean is different or which means are different. It just suggests that at least one of them is. We will have a follow-up analysis to tell us or help us decide which mean is different. So this was hopefully a relatively quick video to help you through the code you need to fit analysis of variance in R. The basic idea is use the function lm and then the function ANOVA. Inside LM, it should always go numerical variable for which you'll calculate means as explained by 
some categorical explanatory variable with levels numbered greater than two.